and welcome to space. Now, this year, a satellite called Rosetta is going to do something that's never been done before. It's going to catch up with a comet, fly alongside, and then put a lander on its surface. And we have special access to the team who are making it happen. But first, some other news from the universe this month. Listen carefully, this music was generated by the sun. This is the sound of Crater Live, a new radio station that translates solar activity into sound. Researchers in Canada copied the sticky feet of the gecko lizard to create this wall-climbing robot designed to work on the outside of spacecraft. And jets of steam have been spotted shooting from the surface of Ceres, a minor planet in the asteroid belt. The Herschel Space Telescope spotted the water vapor. A few days ago, the Rosetta spacecraft woke up after two and a half years of hibernation. And we were there when it happened. The eyes of the world were on the Rosetta team as they waited for their spacecraft to call home. Somewhere out in space, 800 million kilometers away, it was waking up. The signal should have come just after half past six in the evening. 45 minutes later, the wait was nearly over. A tiny message from a distant probe and a huge relief. Getting it back is incredible. It's really, now we have one of the most fantastic adventure in front of us, one of the most challenging space missions ever. I'm a bit less stressed than I was a minute ago, but I didn't think I was going to get this stressed. I got very stressed. And now we've got it back and we can do the science we're supposed to be doing now for the next two years. This is. This is a brilliant, a brilliant time. Plus 45 minutes, so hopefully it's already warming up this time. This was no ordinary day in Darmstadt, Germany, as the Rosetta team faced unprecedented media attention. There were 90 journalists on site at the European Space Agency's operations centre with a barrage of cameras, questions and interviews. The attention of the media was exceptional. So we, we turned from operators into I don't know, explanators. <laughs> also telling the people not to worry too much, while we were worried, of course, but we had to explain to the people not to worry that everything was under control. The reason for the attention is the audacious nature of the mission. Rosetta is hunting down a comet, and once it catches its prey, it will spend a year flying alongside, speeding into the inner solar system. Matt Taylor heads the science team who made the 21 instruments which will map, scan and sample the comet in intimate detail. OK, to give you an indication of where Rosetta is and where it's been, here's a map of the solar system. Now, in 2014, we're coming back into the inner solar system and this is the main phase of the mission where we really do the prime science investigating this comet. Summertime this year, we rendezvous with the comet, again, as it's approaching the sun. And by summer next year, it's actually going to be at its closest approach to the sun, where the comet is at its most dynamic. It's throwing out tons of material per second at that, during that period. Such a complex mission requires constant attention from people like Armel Ubo, an operations engineer in the team working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to pilot Rosetta. They have a unique tool to help them, a perfect copy of the spacecraft on which they can perform tests and simulations. But they still have worries about the status of the real thing out in space. I feel stressed. Um, it's a bit like meeting an old friend again uh, that you haven't seen in many years. You used to know this person very well, but you don't know anymore who this person is. So both eager and a bit worried to know if it still works or not. A 
Of course, the best way to get to know each other again is simply to talk. At the moment, we're using a very low bitrate, so basically it takes a long time to talk to the spacecraft. We have to talk to it very, very slowly. So one of our first activities is actually to change the mode of communication so that we can start talking much faster. Some of the first data to come back offers a welcome surprise. Rosetta was launched in 2004, but even after 10 years in the harsh environment of space, its solar panels are still providing just the same level of power as they did before hibernation. Now, a whole list of checks can be carried out. We will switch on all units on board, we will test them, we will later in springtime, we will switch on the scientific instruments, verify them, um, and this will bring us to the detection of the comet. We want the cameras on board the spacecraft to, to see the comet so that then we can maneuver the, and the, the, the trajectory of the spacecraft to the right direction. The operations manager, Andrea Accomazzo, is now facing a year of intense activity. The day after the wake-up, he's running through Rosetta's logs with the team, sorting out bugs in the software and beginning a long list of test procedures. What comes in front of us is still the best part of the mission, getting to the comet, stopping them there, characterize them and demonstrate to ourselves that we are able to do it within a short period of time and we can fly down at a low altitude above the surface. This is what we need to do. It's an enormous challenge. Rosetta won't fly in empty space. It will track around an unpredictable ball of dust and ice the size of Mont Blanc. The mission will test the technical team to the limit, but it should also take our science understanding to a whole new level. It's not just about learning about the comet. By doing that, we have this connection to how the solar system was formed, how the comet evolved within the early solar system. We can link that to the planetary formation and their evolution. The comets were there right at the beginning in the solar system. They were flung out into deep freeze, storing this information, this primordial mix of material. And that gives us a clue to, in fact, ultimately where we come from as well. We'll follow Rosetta's extraordinary journey all year on Euronews, from the first image of the comet to the moment when the lander drills into the surface, living through this voyage of discovery with the engineers and scientists who are making it happen. Next time in space, we have an update from the Rosetta team and asteroids hitting Earth and satellites crashing in orbit what are the risks and how are they managed? We'll find out. See you then.